computer. Hey everybody, it's Kristen and Mary Fran again with our brilliantly resilient live raw resetting. <laughs> we're just jumping in and helping everybody get through what we're all getting through together. And um, today we are so, I am beside myself excited that first of all, she had a few minutes to be able to chat with us. The great Trisha Brooke, who was my, if you, you've probably seen me tag her and mention her, mention her a bazillion times in my, when I talk about my journey, because Trisha was my TEDx coach. Talk about having to be um, all in and resilient. We thought I met Trisha and said, my goal is in 18 months to do a TED talk. And then she's like, guess what? You're on in five months. <laughs> <laughs> At the worst part of my life, it was like, so if anybody says this is not a good time to do something, uh-uh, Trisha's like, get in there and just do it. And it ended up to be the best thing that ever happened for me as a person, as a speaker, as a nonprofit owner, and as a mom. So it was it was phenomenal to uh, that the universe brought us together, and I'm so happy to bring Trisha to the rest of my world and Mary Fran's world in our brilliantly resilient journey. So Trisha, thanks so much for for having a few minutes to come on and talk with us today. Thank you, Kristen and Mary Fran. And Kristen, you call, I say yes. I don't even ask for what. <laughs> so anything, anytime, always yes. Yeah, uh, I, I usually have a second that I have to think about it when she calls me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Mary Fran's like, how much tea have I had today? Can I handle this energy level? And now I don't even, I don't even take the time to send a whole text to Mary Fran anymore. I just hit call. I'm like, look, I don't have time to text. Here's what's going to go down. <laughs> Here's what we're doing. Here's what yeah. we're doing today. Which is how this all came about. We just yeah. decided, you know, instead of waiting to the summer and recording, you know, full on, let's just get all this information out there. So anyway, that's, let's uh, jump right into the whole reason that, that we called you, Tricia, because so many people, we've got a couple of things here that I think that we'll, we'll put up front to let people know where we're going to go with this today. Uh, and then we go on on Kristen and Mary Fran's wild ride all over the place. <laughs> so um, Mary Fran and I were talking this morning that I've got a, a college kid in my house that is is him and all of his friends and a lot of, because of the way my friends are and the ages of our kids have college kids, high school seniors. They're feeling like their plans are so derailed that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that you've had experience with that in your own journey. So I want to tackle that. And then also business owners are, are losing it um, because plans are derailed. Everything's getting canceled and they feel like all of their, their hopes and dreams are in the can and how do they pick themselves up? And you're actually tackling that also. So let's, um, if we can go back and begin at the beginning of, of, where you started out, what you wanted to do, and then bring us up to speed of what you're doing now. Do you mean the very beginning, Kristen? <laughs> How far back do you want me to go? Way, way the plans back. have been derailed from the beginning. This is not new. <laughs> you know what? That is the key to this whole conversation, that this is not new. I mean, clearly the scale on which the world is experiencing this is new, right. but plans being derailed, I mean, how many times... I, I want to know the people who start a plan and it goes exactly the way they plan from beginning to end, because I don't know anybody that that happens to. So And how limiting, that. how limiting is it if our plan is exactly perfectly how we wanted it to go? Yes. That's the, that's the, the thing that people um, I think can, can learn from this is um, let me just share H1N1 hit right in 2009. Mm -hmm. I had to cancel my wedding. <laughs> oh my god i didn't know oh. that this is not the first time plans have been derailed <laughs> or shifted oh my wow. god no, I'm, I'm happily married for 11 years we did get married but things happen all the time and if i had said oh my gosh poor me i spent all my money on the wedding it was an act of god so i'm not getting it back how am i ever going to get married that would have slowed down the process of spending the rest of the life of my life with the man who I'm meant to be with. So I think that um, in terms of being resilient, it really starts with gratitude and it, it also is about relationships and innovation and empathy. And I think that these are the, the four things that we really need to be reminded of right now is that when we're in gratitude for what's happening, that means it's not about us. 
when we're in gratitude for what's happening, it gives us an opportunity to say, wow, I'm being given a really big gift here. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it necessarily, but by being thankful for this opportunity, that's when innovation and creativity can come into play. And that's when you say, okay, my business was supposed to be doing a massive launch this week. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> But instead, I'm not going to launch my Big Talk Academy. I'm going to reach out to my community and nurture my relationships. And that for me is going to be the ROI down the road that I can't even see right now. But because I'm in gratitude that I have a community to reach out to and say, all right, everybody, I'm pausing on the launch. We are not going to go into a situation where me asking you to 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 invest in something right now and add to your anxiety, we're not gonna go into that. I'm taking it off the table, so you have one less thing to be anxious about. And what I'm putting on the table is my attention, my time, and my ability to create a community because I can do that for free and you can join my community for free. And then all of a sudden, we've got these thought leaders and these innovators and these creators coming together and what you're innovating and creating now is going to be the abundance later. So seeing things short-sighted because of fear and anxiety and uncertainty is going to get in your way later. So I really think it's important, gratitude, relationship building, innovation, and empathy. There's a lot of people hurting right now. There's a lot of people who are afraid right now. And that's not something we can change because it's our point of view of how we respond to this. It's our point of view if we go into fear, if we go into scarcity. It's our point of view if we think the world is ending. Well, guess what? I was in Russia during the coup when Gorbachev was taken out of office. God, I was in up. New York City. <laughs> what the heck? I, was, I lived in the East Village during the squatters and Tent City. I lived right next door to Tompkins Square Park when it was cops and guns. I lived in New York City during 9-11 and performed on 9-12. H1N1, no wedding. And here we are, coronavirus. And here I, I am. Can I just say, look at this woman? Because after <laughs> all of that, I want to know what cosmetics you use. Have you, <laughs> I mean, right. really, really. I drink lots of water. <laughs> Wait, well, and the I, funny thing is, I didn't know any of that. I was thinking, oh, Trisha's got this great thing about she went to New York, you know, for her dream. And then, and now I'm like, oh my God. She's well, our poster true. child. That's true too. I, I did move to New York for my dream. And in terms of being resilient, being in showbiz has really set me up for, uh, for mastering the art of resiliency. I mean, you hear no every single, more than once a day when you're a performer, when you're in showbiz. And that started when I was a dancer, that moved into when I was a choreographer, it moved into when I was a director and a writer and a filmmaker. I go into a room and I say, I want you to finance my, my feature film. No, why not? It's the best film ever. No, next, <laughs> next, next. So the resiliency comes from practice. Just like getting good at anything, you get good at being resilient. So yeah. is there something in your background or your DNA or your upbringing or something that you, that you say with all of those no's, it's great practice and I'll eventually get the yes, as opposed to all the folks right now that are going, see, that's my life, that's my story, this happened in the fall and this is happening now. Like where's there, what, what is that magic ingredient? or some of? Well, I think the, the grit, discipline, determination, all of that is part of who I am and what my DNA is made up of. However, see, that's my life. That is very egocentric. That is very limited. Um, the work that I do in the world has always been about making the world a better place. Now, I didn't always know that when I was dancing because I loved dancing, I loved performing, I loved traveling the world, and that was very much about me. But I, I knew that when I was performing on a stage, I could reach that audience, whether it was 100 or 10,000. And that was me giving the gift of my talents to the audience, it was serving. Didn't know I was doing it then, but I do know I'm doing it now. So me being very conscious about showing up right now in a way that is of service and that is modeling what's possible 
will hopefully get those people who are stuck in, oh my God, my life is so terrible, to just think differently for a second. And that's where the empathy part of this resilience comes in. I empathize and have deep compassion for everyone who's struggling, for everyone who is not going to be able to pay their bills right now, for everyone who's home with their kids and, and feels very stressed out about it. That is difficult, but it's reality. Mm -hmm. So when we begin to accept our reality, and then see possibility, then they can coexist. And that's what happened with Speakers Who Dare. The reality is New York City shut down all the theaters, starting with Broadway. The reality is I had a show that was happening on March 24th at a theater. The reality is I had 22 speakers and a situation. <laughs> So <laughs> what happened next was me going into gratitude, thinking about compassion and empathy for my speakers, and then innovating. And that moved from doing a live event to eliminating the audience because we were, this has been a process, as you all know. We went from no groups over 100, no groups over 50, to no groups over 10, to absolutely no groups. So we went from live where we had 130 people in the audience, everything was going along as planned. I had just printed out all the scripts. I mean, everything was going along as planned. Then, no large groups. Okay, how can I support and serve both the audience and my speakers and be responsible? I'll eliminate the audience. Mm -hmm. That's great. So now we're down to 22 people and my tech, my tech crew. So we'll give everybody a refund. I'll turn this into a live stream so that they can come on live, see the exact event, but there's no audience. So it's, it's a safer environment. And then things continue to change. Okay, how can I serve my speakers? How can I serve my audience and keep everyone safe? I'm gonna remove everyone from the theater. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. And I'm going to ask them if they would be willing to record their talks from the safety of their homes with my direction and with grace and creativity. And they said, yes. Wow. So I've been able to give them an opportunity to show up in a new way as a speaker, to innovate a new platform for speakers mm -hmm. so that it's not from a stage it is super creative, it's super theatrical, and I'm, this weekend I'm cutting together a film version of Speakers Who Dare, which will go live at 10 a.m. Eastern on March 24th. And there's some, there's some special things that I'm adding, of course, because uh, I want it to be an exciting event and an exciting show. So we are, I literally removed everyone from the theater. So there's no, there's no risk. We are uh, following the protocol of being safe in New York. We're following the protocol of the CDC in terms of uh, slowing down the, um, the virus so that we can heal as a community and as a global culture and get back to what it is we're meant to be doing, which is making the world a better place. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. If that's not resilient and innovation and all of that, then, I mean, that is, that is, now let me ask you this, in the, in the realness and rawness of all of this, were there days as you were getting all of those notifications, were you like, for the love of God, <laughs> or do you just, you know, sparkle and go, all right, good, I got that. <laughs> I was very mindful and I, I definitely spent time going inward. And I also spent many, many questions and meant much time saying, am I making any decisions based on my own needs? Hmm. Am I making any decisions because it's my show? Am I making any decisions because of my ego? And it was very important to me that I never make decisions based on my ego or my show. And I think what was easy about that was I put on shows all the time. I can create a show without any problem. This wasn't a big loss like the canceling of my wedding. <laughs> a more yeah, of a it's kind of a once in a lifetime. That, yeah. Yeah, that was like, do we get married twice? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh so this for me was really all about making sure that I was elevating, supporting, um, and giving the speakers the platform that they worked so hard for in a way that was safe, responsible, and creative. Um, so when 
when Sunday came around and things just kept progressively getting more restrictive, I had to think, I never thought once I need to cancel and I never wanted to postpone. That was clear to me. I had massive clarity around, I'm not postponing because these speakers are busy. My life is not going to allow for a postponement and I can find a way to make this okay. I knew I could. So canceling was never an option. So because canceling was never an option in my mind, in my heart, that is why I got the download of how to make this happen. I stayed open in gratitude and I thought about really what's possible. And that's something I would love for all of your listeners and viewers to consider is anything really is possible. And when you're in a dark time, when you're in a time that just feels like this is never going to end, how the F am I ever going to get past this or out of this? When you stay open to what is possible, the universe will provide you with an answer. Oh, you're bringing you know, tears to my eyes. <laughs> you said you said two words that I think are key to that, and 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 they were removing your ego and empathy. And at this point in the game, and you talk about service, and I think that's that's where we all have to operate from that place. And not only are you providing a service to the people who are going to hear these these speeches and these talks. But, you know, you're providing a service to the, the, the speakers themselves. Like there are ways that we can serve different people in this, in this whole arena and, and people that we might not think about serving in ordinary circumstances. But removing that ego and that empathy, I think they're so important. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that when we're stuck in this is happening to me instead yeah. of for me, and I, I find that to be super cliche and cheesy, but very valuable right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the idea about the, the creativity and the innovation, we had a conversation with, um, with our buddy Chip Baker yesterday, and we talked about that. This is when all of the norms are taken away, that's when people begin to get creative and think, all right, well, how can I do this without that? And, and you know, that opens the door for, for a lot of of innovation and a lot of learning and a lot of possibilities that, you know, we, we didn't have just a couple of weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Now I've, I've just wanted to bring up that what this whole being of service looks like in absolute, like someone else's life, other than just, you know, Tricia with this one event and still serving and, and being in service. You told me, Tricia, when I, when I was going to do that, when you were coaching me on that TED talk and I kept saying, I can't, that was when my ex-husband first left. It was the worst time in my life. I was scared of everything, financial, everything. And you're, you changed my mindset that day when you said, but your message needs to serve people. There's a lot of people that need to know what you know, and you have to look at this as serving them as opposed to serving myself as launch. I kept thinking it would launch my speaking career and do the things I wanted to do. And you, you totally switched it that it was no, it was about everybody else. And when I went in, it was just a very tiny little different way of looking at it. And then it became the thing that Yes, it has served all of my community extremely well, but it's the thing that got me out of the pit I was in, that it actually ended up serving me very well to be first in service of everybody else. Right. Yeah, I think wild. those are the things, I think those are the things that when, again, removing that piece of ego, it also eliminates a lot of the fear that you have about putting yourself out there. When you can say, okay, this isn't really for me. I want to do this for somebody else. I mean, we all have a tendency to jump in when we're helping other people, I think, as opposed to putting ourselves on the front line in that judgment zone. When you take away that fear of being judged and think, hey, maybe this will help somebody. And if other people don't like it, eh, you know, whatever. Um, but when you put yourself out there in that frame of mind, then you, you, you're harnessing an energy that wasn't available to you before. Oh, beautifully said. Yes. Absolutely. Now, so did I, you have any of the speakers in this, in the um, speakers who dare and, and turning it into a video? I know that I'm thinking of the people that are nervous to be on stage must be like, cool, I get to be home. But the people that need that audience and need like me, I, I love to be in front of people and get my energy from them. How did, how did, um, how did they manage with, with something like this? 
I gave them some direction as a group in our Facebook group, which was um, you may feel as though you are sitting in front of a camera and that you're not reaching anyone and you don't have that energy of a live audience. However, you need to broadcast and transmit through that lens because now you have a global audience. Mm. And that is how I directed them in terms of how to manage that difference in energy of standing on a stage, having real live feedback energetically. They're not going to have that energetic feedback. However, they get to know energetically that on March 24th, their live stream has global reach. And so they literally get to talk to more than 100 people that day. So it is a different way of performing. It's just like when I'm working with actors who are in theater versus actors who are uh, in a film or in a, a television series. Hmm. Um, that projection when you're at a theater is much more energetic. It's much more, um, uh, it requires more energy when you're doing a tape with an actor. <laughs> you have to be small. You have to like... It's lightning in a bottle. So they get an opportunity now to uh, step into the role of uh, actor. You know what I was just thinking about too? So the other night, me and, and my middle son, Mitchell, and a, a few of us were supposed to go to Boston for um, St. Patrick's Night Dropkick Murphys at House of Blues. That was like Mitchell's dream. And we had this foundation that was working on backstage passes and everything for him. And then everything happened and we couldn't go. But Dropkick Murphys still did a live stream since everything got shut down and that's their big annual thing. They did a live stream of their concert and Mitch and I had a whole, we were in the kitchen, we had the surround sound in the house on and had our own little St. Patrick's party with them playing and, and um, you know, I was able to watch it on YouTube, but we had a conversation after that. Mitch is like, how could they possibly have still had the same, you really felt like that place, he didn't believe me that there was nobody in it that they, he's like, there had to have been a whole crowd there that we couldn't hear. I'm like, no, it was just the production crew. That's all that they were allowed to have. He could not get over that they came through mm -hmm. as if there was a crowd in the room. And it was, and the same thing that you're saying, like for all of your speakers, Dropkick Murphys had everyone, it was constant, the, the comments, I'm in Dublin, I'm, you know, and I'm like, I'm in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. It was all over the world. And everybody then was so grateful, mm -hmm. as was I, that it took, and it was two hours that went by like that. And never in my life would I have thought I would look at this little phone and have the greatest time with my son not being able to be there live. But it's exactly what you're talking about. They came through that lens like like we were all in front of them yeah absolutely and jamie broderick my producing partner for speakers who dare she will be an animal on march <laughs> trust me she we will know be, her we, la, 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 la. she with will the be, pr she yeah. will be working with marketing and pr so if you join us you will have an incredible uh live stream experience how can we join it let's make sure that we mention yeah, let's that. make sure that mm -hmm. absolutely you can go to speakers who and uh on the attend we can also put this link in the in the show notes yeah um yeah speakers who .com, and there's an attend button and it'll take you straight to the live stream 22 speakers for 22 dollars wow March 24th amazing. at 10 a.m eastern that's amazing 10 so now before we before we end all this i want to go back 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 to when I first met you, you were just kind of jumping into this and really didn't have a foothold in this world. And I mean, you, you certainly had a foothold in, in the producing and, and the New York and the theater and all that. But as far as the speaking thing and producing those kinds of things and where you started with the TEDx and, you know, the podcast and all that, you didn't have any of that in, uh, just a few short years ago. So like, I'm always amazed by the, by watching your trajectory over that time, because you just dove in. So how, like how, what kind of advice can you give to people at this point where all the rules are changed? What do we do? That's such a great question. In terms of jumping in, I have always jumped in, whether it was in performance, writing, directing. Um, I jumped into being a writer because I was impatient about a show that I wanted to direct. So I just wrote it myself. I jumped in. 
<laughs> as a producer because I was impatient about my show that I wanted to direct. So I just produced it myself. <laughs> so, I, impatience is a great quality. I'm the same. Like I want everything yesterday. It's all right. If you're not going to give it to me, I'll do it myself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, yes. I was... I had zero social media presence three years ago. I was not on Facebook. I was very uh, against social media. I didn't need social media. I was not in the online space. So jumping in was about um, being willing to be judged. It was being willing to be embarrassed. It was being willing to make mistakes and get back up. Uh, like you said, there are no rules right now. We get to create our own reality. We we design our lives every single day. And I believe we design our lives before this happened. We are designing our lives during this moment in time and we get to design our lives after, which is why how you design your life right now is going to have a direct effect on what your life looks like after. Mm -hmm. So jumping in full steam ahead, we want to be mindful of what's happening right now, which is why I'm not doing my launch, right? We want to be conscious. We want to be conscious and have empathy and take our egos out of it. However, it does not mean stop. Mm -hmm. If we stop when this is over, we won't have anything. We need to be planting these seeds and innovating and creating and designing our lives now so that when we're past this, through this, over this, we have something incredible that we never could have imagined if we weren't designing our life with these circumstances right now. I love that. Uh, you talked about earlier, you talked about a, a return on investment down the road, your ROI down the road, and that's exactly what that is. But it's a shift in the mindset of how you're approaching it right now. And now we have to operate on that level of building our communities. And you know, you kind of have to look at it, if you do want to put it through a business lens, like look at it through your creating those thousand raving fans that you're supposed to have to carry your message on. But this is an opportunity to do that, provided you have that kind of little value shift in your head that you're serving at this point to eventually, you know, build for down the road. And for those of you who are already serving, not even thinking about shifting, but thinking about, oh my goodness, now is the time more than ever to, st to step forward and to stand up. And there's so many people who are serving right now beautifully on social media and online, and I've been witnessing it. And I'm so grateful that they're giving themselves the opportunity and the permission to step fully into who they are as somebody who serves. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's good stuff. And, and yeah, this is the time that I am seeing, you know, in all of the madness, there is a ton of people serving. It's cool. It's one of those things I always say, um, especially in my rare disease community, if you look with hopeful eyes, you will see hope and you will see all of these good things. If you're going to look through a different lens, that's all you're going to see. But I keep seeing all the serving and people just literally jumping into even like the um, all of the athletic trainers that are not getting any business right now, but they're still online saying, I'm here for you and doing the workouts, like those kinds of things um, without even considering what their ROI is. And they're not realizing that that's huge ROI later. And, and our thing that we always talk about, we talked about this, Mary Fran and I, at the beginning of this week when we started this, you know, and I've said to my kids, at the end of this, um, exactly what you were saying, Tricia, at the end of this, what do you want to be able to look back and say that you did? You played the we a thousand times? <laughs> like, would you, and we always say, do you want to come out? We're all going through something at some point now. We're all going through it together. Do you want to come out broken or brilliant? So if you're going to be in service and continuing to get your message out there and pivoting and seeing how you can serve people empathetically, like you say, um, yeah, then, then there's, there's no chance you're coming out broken. It will mm -hmm. be brilliant. We just, my problem is I don't know what it looks like yet. I would like to read the last page of the book <laughs> to know where I'm going all through the chapters. <laughs> I got to let it go. Is Nobody, nobody's doing that right now. So yeah, there is no I mean, last There's page. some consolation in that where we're all figuring this out as we go. So it is the perfect opportunity to put yourself out there. You said about being afraid of being judged. You know, there should be no judgment at this point because we're all figuring it out as we go. And this is the perfect opportunity to jump into those spaces, Tricia, as you said. And, and you know, don't worry about the judgment. Who cares at this point? We have bigger fish to fry. <laughs> right. right. 
And if you do start to feel like you're going to be judged, just go on Instagram and follow the hashtag work from home. And people are doing selfies of what their outfits are. Oh my God. It's a, all these people that are used to being in the corporate world and now they're home and they're in like a shirt and tie for the video. And then they have like shorts, you know, and crazy socks. It's hilarious. So then, Hey, we'll all judge each other on our crazy outfits and have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for finding the time to do this with us today, Tricia. It's so helpful. And that's what we're trying to do is serve our community um, without even, we just launched all of this, had to put everything on hold and said, let's just get out there and be raw and help people give them the tools that they need. And boy, did you deliver a ton of great Holy stuff. Holy cow. More than what we thought was coming. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. You're making us look amazing. Tricia. <laughs> like we plan Mary Fran, we said we were going to say we planned this for weeks that we knew we were going to do this. Thank you for making that <laughs> appear to be the reality. <laughs> oh my, my pleasure. I'd love to just come on anytime you want me. Hey, you're in. Well, All right, yeah, good. And we'll look forward to the, to the show on, uh, it's Tuesday, right? Tuesday, on the 24th. 24th. Yep. All right, cool. Thanks so much, Tricia. Thanks, Tricia. It was a pleasure.